Welcome to today's talk. My name is Joseph Jackerman, and today I'll be talking about a tool which is very helpful, very important in design, used a lot, and that's the concept of metaphor. So what's a metaphor? Metaphor, if you look it up in the dictionary, it'll suggest a series of explanations which are about describing something, perhaps something very new or something very complex in terms of something simpler usually and something more familiar. So in language, but also in the physical world, the metaphors when we talk about something in terms of something else, and we do that to try to simplify, make it easier to understand, help convey the characteristics which are important about that thing. So what kind of metaphors are there? Language, all languages are rich in metaphors and there's several different types. Uh, shown on this slide are one type of metaphor found in all languages and this is a description proposed by Lakoff and Johnson some years back. And here we're talking about orientational metaphors, very important. It's important for designers to remember or to think about the fact that language, all languages are directional. More is up, less is down, happy is up, sad is down. Having control or force or some sort of consistency is up, no ability to control, no forces, no consistency is down. So all languages are orientational, based on gravity, based on our body looking up and looking down. So it's very important to remember in design that when you design your switch or your button or your icon or your control panel, there's certain ways of thinking which people have embedded mentally in their consciousness and their expectation, quite often coming from language, and language has directions. Certain things are expected automatically to be up, and certain things are expected to be down. And if we violate the expectation with our button, or our control knob, or our menu item layout on our display, um, could cause errors, could cause some confusion. It's probably going to be less efficient because it's diverging from the language we use every day to express ourselves. Another type of metaphor, trying to help people to understand something complicated or something abstract or something not so concrete in terms of something else that they're familiar with, it's simpler, that is more concrete, that is less abstract. There's a set of entity of metaphors which can be labeled, as Lakoff and Johnson have suggested, as entity metaphors, container metaphors, or personification metaphors, where we talk about something in terms of something else. In personification, we try to emphasize the decisions that were made or or the the sequence of events by describing some force of nature some object some situation or some abstract concept in terms of persons people we know what a person would be thinking and why they would have done something let's see if that helps to understand the phenomena we're talking about so entity metaphors container metaphors personifications are all ways of trying to help to explain or make simpler some something that may be less familiar or more abstract. And why are metaphors useful in design? Because they're incredibly helpful, because they help us as designers to make complicated artifacts or complicated services simpler to understand by structuring the characteristics, the, the aesthetics, the functionality of these product systems or service along the line of consistency of something that the people are familiar with. So complex things or concepts can be made easier to use, easier to understand, easier to explain to other people by borrowing a metaphor and trying wherever possible to stick with that same set of characteristics that sets same set of constraints in the product system or service we're designing. So metaphors, they're useful to designers because they provide a focal point, 
they provide a way of constraining, of simplifying, they, they provide a sort of framework or guidance or frame for the design process. Characteristics which don't fit the metaphor will probably be harder for people to pick up on and understand and maybe lead to some mistakes. Characteristics which seem to be very, very similar to what the basic metaphor of the design is trying to achieve. Those characteristics presumably would make it simpler, more understandable, easier, more frictionless for the people who have to use the product system or service. Metaphors are incredibly helpful, so they get used in many, many applications and not just by designers. One use of metaphor is to suggest product characteristics. Here's an example on this slide from an advertisement from a few years back for the Mitsubishi Pajero. And what is this advertisement that was shown in magazines on television? What is it trying to suggest? It's trying to suggest that the vehicle will be strong. The vehicle will be durable. The vehicle will be forceful. The vehicle will be capable and the vehicle will defend itself is very strong and, and it's not subject, it's not going to be weak in a crash. So by using the animal that we're familiar with, whose characteristics have these details, we're able to suggest perhaps this vehicle has a large engine. Perhaps the alloy wheels are slightly thicker and stronger. Perhaps the metal panels are of a thicker gauge. Perhaps this vehicle is going to be very strong and powerful, just in the same manner as the animal that we're familiar with from having seen on television and shows and those who are fortunate enough to see the animal in person. Other uses of metaphors uh, when designing a product, if the product's going to work in a certain domain and has certain functions, we may borrow the aesthetics, the functionality, some of the details from other products, particularly those that were deemed successful and well-known traditionally. We may borrow some of the characteristics for the new product to carry over the expectations of how it works and thus making it easier to become familiar with the new product, to learn its usage and to avoid mistakes or errors in the usage of the product. In the case of this example, the nest was clearly borrowing some aesthetics and some logic and some functionalities from the very famous T87 Honeywell uh, thermostat, which is found in homes all across the world and will be familiar to many, many people. Metaphors can be used to suggest a meaning, particularly for something brand new that we're doing that doesn't have precedence. If we have a disruptive innovation and we're trying to convey the main concept, the main functionality, the main sense or meaning of that particularly new uh, design, that particular new opportunity, a metaphor can be a wonderful means of explaining it without having to explain it. In this case, an example of a security device for data security, which uses a USB and it stores uh, data securely in an encrypted manner on the device. It's shaped physically like a lock, like something most people have in their home and are familiar with. Thus, the concept of security is automatic. As a metaphor, uh, it makes the new device less difficult to explain and and potentially more familiar to people. And design metaphors can be used quite often to change a meaning. So if we have something existing and we're looking for some new opportunities and we're looking for some new markets or new customers for our particular opportunity, quite often the metaphor is the means or the tool that we can use as designers to make that change. In the example shown on this slide, a simple bottle of water in a simple plastic container has its connotations and associations. There's certain expectations from the public in terms of what it is, what it does, and how much the public should pay for it. If we package the same water in a bottle which can be reused and which has a decorative sense and which can be left around the house to make statements, about our aesthetic preferences and our 
way of li living, uh, that particular water can now be costed much more because it's fulfilling a different meaning for the people who are making the purchase. It's no longer just to be something you drink. It's now also the bottle that remains in your hands is something that has a series of functions and aesthetic properties which you can deploy in your home or your workplace for certain specific meaning, uh, reasons and motivations. And a metaphor is an incredibly helpful tool uh, that designers can use to make interfaces more understandable, simpler, more intuitive. Uh, many digital devices today are very complex. Uh, many of these devices offer multiple functionalities and multiple connectivities and many, many different characteristics, which are difficult for people to keep track of, to, to take in all of the possibilities and what are the distinguishing characteristics and differences between them. Uh, if the interface can be based on a traditional interface of some machine or some artifact that people are familiar with, we can make the task simpler. If it at least is consistent with some idea or some artifact or some animal or person or service provision that people have come to expect, they can find it easier, the users, to learn the interface because they sort of have a feeling of what the device might be able to do and what it might be able to provide and can have suspicions about whether there should be certain menu options somewhere on the interface to do certain things. So a metaphor can serve as a plan or a roadmap or a guide. If we can find something people are familiar with that does some of the same things and we can make the interface consistent with that, our new, perhaps more abstract, more complicated design has a better chance of being learned and understood by its users. And metaphors, it's important to keep in mind that even where there are well-established, important metaphors available, as designers, we have to keep an open mind for the fact that metaphors quite often will need to be updated or changed. There will be times when there will be changes in technology changes in human behavior or changes in societal values which will disruptively shift people's understandings of certain things and certain processes and certain services in a direction that requires a new metaphor as a rally point as a frame as a focus for design one current transition which we're undergoing at the moment is that in road vehicles uh, road mobility uh, we have very well-known, well-understood metaphors from the 20th century, such as the company car, the taxi, the family car, the rental car, and so forth. These are very rapidly at the moment shifting into new metaphors based on concepts like urban shuttle, the mobile office, the mobile entertainment center, or more sooner on the streets, the specialist shuttle for perhaps disabled or elderly or people with particular needs in terms of mobility. So we had one set of metaphors that developed over more than a hundred years, the well understood, the well ingrained socially in our society. But at the moment, those metaphors are falling a bit short on explaining and helping people understand what some of the new technologies and some of the new vehicles are capable of providing. So metaphors need to be monitored, checked, and occasionally we'll have to update them or change them altogether as our societal context changes. Thank you very much for your time and patience. I hope this very, very short introduction to the concept of design metaphor has uh, raised a few interesting points which which may be a benefit to you thank you so much i look forward to speaking to you with you again on the next occasion thank you